Let's talk about horizontal asymptotes and the end behavior of functions. So consider some function f of x. We can find the horizontal asymptotes of f of x by taking the limit as x goes to both infinity and negative infinity. A horizontal asymptote is some horizontal line y equals something. To find that something, we just take the limit. So here we go. I have graphed some function f of x, and as we go to negative infinity, we can see that our function is approaching this horizontal line. That's called the horizontal asymptote. It approaches, but never actually reaches it, which is why we take a limit. So, to find this horizontal asymptote, we would take the limit as x goes to negative infinity. Furthermore, we see that this function is approaching this bottom horizontal line as x goes to positive infinity. And so, to find this line, we would take the limit as x goes to positive infinity. Let's take a look at some examples. Here's a classic, f of x equals 1 over x. To find the horizontal asymptotes, all we have to do is take the limit as x goes to both positive and negative infinity. Well, as x goes to positive infinity, we have 1 over infinity that gets really huge down here, and so that gives us 0. If we plug in negative infinity, we have 1 over uh, something very huge down here but negative, then that will give us negative 0, which is, well, still just 0. So we have really only one horizontal asymptote. And as x goes to both infinity and negative infinity, our function will still be approaching 0. Let's take a look at what this looks like. I've graphed this on Wolfram Alpha. And we can see that as x goes to infinity, our function is approaching 0. And as x goes to negative infinity, our function is still approaching 0, but from the negative side, as we noted. And so our two horizontal asymptotes are y equals 0. Let's take a look at another example. Here we have f of x equals 3x cubed minus 6 over 5x cubed plus x. Now, when we take the limit of this, we'll take the limit as x goes to both positive and negative infinity. And here we have 3x cubed minus 6 over 5x cubed plus x. Now, of course, we have some grains of sand. 6 is a grain of sand compared to the magnitude of 3x cubed next to it. Likewise, x is also a grain of sand compared to the 5x cubed next to that x cubed over x cubed cancels out, and here we have 3 over 5. Does it matter whether we take the limit to both infinity or negative infinity? Our limit is still going to be 3 over 5. And so, our horizontal asymptotes are y equals 3 over 5. And if you wanted to see the graph of this, I can show you. Here's the graph on Wolfram Alpha. We can see that as x goes to infinity, we seem to be approaching 0.6, which is 3 over 5. And as we go off to negative infinity, we seem to be approaching 0.6 again, which is also 3 over 5. Let's take a look at yet another example. Here we have f of x equals 5 minus 10e to the negative x. This one we might have some difficulty with because we have two things going on. One that happens when we go to positive infinity and one that happens when we go to negative infinity. So here let's take both of our limits independently. Let's start with positive infinity. Here we have 5 minus 10 e to the negative x. As e goes to negative infinity, well, that's 1 over e to the infinity, and 1 over e to the infinity is going to approach 0 because the denominator gets very, very, very large. And so this fraction is going to 0. Times negative 10, still 0. So here we have 5 minus 0 is 5. So as we approach infinity, it seems that 
our horizontal asymptote is y equals 5. Now let's approach negative infinity. Let's take the limit as x goes to negative infinity of 5 minus 10 e to the negative x. Well, as x goes to negative infinity, we have negative, negative infinity. So this is really the same thing as e to the infinity. Well, e to the infinity is getting very, very, very monumentally big. So we have some number minus some infinite magnitude. Well, this 5 is a grain of sand compared to the magnitude of that infinity. And minus positive infinity is negative infinity. And if you looked at this example, as we approach positive infinity, we seem to have the line y equals 5. Of course, we're going by 50s here, so this doesn't look like much, but that is 5. And as we go to negative infinity, we're diverging to negative infinity.